Uh, today's class, it won't be a real long class, but I just want to touch on a few things. Today's class is called, Is Your Marriage Built Upon Lust or Love? Is Your Marriage Built Upon Lust or Love? If you, if you have uh, children in the room that you don't want to hear, want to hear about things such as lust, sex, things of that nature, I understand that. Um, but in this class, we are going to go over marriage. And, and sometimes some of those things do entail that. So um, I'm not showing anything derogatory at all, obviously, but we are going to discuss some things. So you just if you, do, if you don't want that, if you don't want your children exposed to that, then uh, you can have them leave and um, they can catch the class another time. Like I said, we ain't going to get vulgar or nothing, but we are going to speak about some stuff. Okay. All right. Is your marriage built upon lust or love? Let's watch that first video. It's about five minutes. We're just going to watch it all the way through, and then we'll jump into the class after that. The root of our nature and our lives are in constant motion towards it. Every component of life works to ensure the survival and advancement of life itself. Sex is arguably the most powerful component as it is the means in which life perpetuates and fights for the collective state of existence. But what implications does the force of sex have on our conscious and human experience of life? As humans, we seek and require more than just physical sexual relationships. We want depth and connection. We want love. But while we are all aware of this and hope to fulfill our conscious goals of connection and love, the biological survival force of sex works to deprive us of these goals. This force controls our unconscious minds and pushes us towards sex with lots of strangers and away from genuine connection and intimacy. The urge and curiosity for sexual adventure and variety is constantly lingering inside of us, prodding for attention. So how should we deal with it? If we break our sexuality down, we can separate its goals into two categories, love and lust. Love being our conscious goal, and lust being our unconscious biological one. We want to satisfy both, and we can, but only when a particular order and process is followed. Otherwise, we will constantly run back and forth between the two and never truly achieve either. Lust comes easier than love, but that does not make it more important. Lust is hollow when it is not filled by love. Lust is needy and greedy. It wants all of our attention and cares for nothing other than itself. When we chase lust, we are forced to neglect love. When we succumb to lust, we become attracted to everyone and as a result, not really anyone. We will never find love through lust. We may pretend that we have, but we would be lying to ourselves. Lust almost always alludes to feelings of love, but does not always ensure it. <laughs> the yearning of survival and reproduction that drives us to want to have sex with as many people as possible relies on the circularity of sex. Anticipation, action, pleasure, emptiness, repeat. And somewhere within this cycle, we are expecting to find love. But it is not there. Lust does not care about love or the various aspirations of humankind. Confusing lust with love is why there is often so much conflict in relationships and marriages. As humans, we are an overpopulated species. So maintaining existence is no longer the issue at hand. Therefore, our sexual nature warrants partially useless results. 
as willful beings, we have the power to examine and understand this and determine how we wish to recalibrate our actions to better fit a balanced and fulfilling life. The real problem humanity is facing is not population or survival. It is lack of love, lack of connection, lack of happiness. The only way to love is through love itself. Love comes first. You must open yourself up to the love that you possess. It is something within us all that is beyond objectification. By embracing the unity between yourself and the rest of the world, love blossoms within you. Love in a lustful and romantic sense may fleet but love in the sense of connection does not. As chemicals fluctuate in the brain and factors of the world push and pull you out of romance, you can still remain constantly with love. When you maintain this, your love will manifest into relationships that are strong and meaningful. By seeking love through lust, you miss out on love. But by seeking lust through love, you become able to profoundly enjoy both. All right. So, is your marriage built upon love or is your marriage built upon lust? So, I wanted to watch the entirety of that video because uh, he touched on some good things, some key points in there about um, when you're seeking love through lust, you never really find it. But if you seek um, lust through love, right, you oftentimes are able to enjoy both, meaning you love this person, they're attractive to you, and even when y'all get older and her body changes and your body changes, the love is still there. You understand? And that's what you want. You want that love to still there. You want to love your wife. You want to love your husband. You want to fight, with, fight for each other and not fight with each other. When things hit hard, you want to know that she got your back. When things get rough, you want to know he got yours. When you get sick in your 50s or your 60s, God forbid, cancer or any type of sickness just comes about, you want to know my wife ain't going nowhere. You want to know if I lose my job or if, if, if whatever happens, I lose a limb in a car accident. I know I'm being graphic, but I'm just being honest. This is life. My husband's still going to be there, right? He ain't looking at no other woman because I'm the only woman he wants. You understand? That's what a woman wants to feel. That's what a man wants to feel. But when it's only built on lust, it's only on that, guess what's going to happen? Slowly those feelings are going to fade away. And we're going to talk about a little, bit, a little bit of that tonight. Marriages built on lust usually never grow. They oftentimes only are about what a person brings to the table sexually and not spiritually. Let's go to Tobit chapter 8. Tobit chapter 8. And let's read verse, uh, let's read six and seven. This is the book of Tobit, chapter eight and verse six. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for an helper and stay. Mm -hmm. Of them came mankind. So from Adam and Eve came all of mankind. That's our, that's our mother and father. Go ahead. Thou said, it is not good that man should be alone. Because it's not good for man to be alone. We weren't created to be by ourselves. Go ahead. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. So let's make him an aid like unto himself. Go ahead. And now, O Lord, I take not this, my sister, for lust. Go ahead. But uprightly. But uprightly. Go ahead. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. That's what you want. You want to become aged together. And what comes with age? Eventually, a woman won't be able to have children anymore. Remember we read earlier, we read the other night. Um, was it the other night? Or maybe it was in a radio show. I can't remember what we was reading. We was reading about... Our foremother, Sarah, right? Let's go to that real quick in Genesis 18. I'm just going to show you what it means. Let us become aged together. Let's go to uh, Genesis 18 and let's read uh, 11 and 12. The book of Genesis chapter 18 and verse 11. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Go ahead. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. After the manner of women. Go ahead. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? Uh-huh. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? 
Go ahead. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Go ahead. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. So Sarah and Abraham, they were very old. And, it's, and Sarah laughed within herself, saying, I am waxed old. Shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? So they were way past. They were still together, but they was way past that age of, you know, uh, being intimate. Right? That's why she said, oh, we, we, it's been a long I'm 90, he 100 or 99, about to be 100. It's, it's been a long time. I don't see how this going to happen. We ain't, we ain't been together like that in a minute. But they were together, meaning they were happily married without a child. Matter of fact, he had, had a son named Ishmael with her handmaid. You see what I'm saying? So he, he got a child, and he could never have one with his wife, yet they were still together. And that's not to say go out and because and, your wife can't have children, you go out and you have your baby by somebody else. No, that was God's doing. That was the Lord's doing because Genesis, the beginning of the nations, therefore Ishmael was born out of that, which is now the Arab man today, okay? So I don't want y'all to get that in your head and say, see, Cap brought it out. I need, you can't have no babies. Let me go have me a baby by another one. No, don't do that, okay? That would be sin. So um, I just wanted to show you where Sarah and Abraham became aged together. That's what Tobias asked for. He said, mercifully ordain, Lord, that me and my wife may become aged together because I take her not for lust. I take her uprightly, right? So when you take a woman for lust or when you take a man for lust, you jump into a relationship because of lust, you lack compassion. Let me show you what I mean. Go to 1 Peter 3 and 8. When y'all jump in a relationship just because of sex, you start to lack compassion for each other. You're not willing to endure the changes that come with marriage. Because marriage, there's going to be change. Look, sometimes y'all going to be balling. You hear me? Sometimes you and your wife, y'all ain't going to tax going to hit the same time. Business going to be going good. It's just going to look like, man, we doing well. Wow, look at the account. Look at our credit. And then in a matter of a year, two, maybe even five all that is, you're looking back like, I don't even remember us even ever doing well. Because it's been tough the last four or five years. That's marriage. But you with her. And she with you. So although y'all going through this, it's like, okay, we are going through a little something financially. But I still got you, baby. You understand? Like, are we going to be all right? Because we together. And together... We can do a lot of stuff. And we might have to start off in a, a one-bedroom or a two-bedroom with our one, two kids, and it's just me and you, four of us in a small apartment. But if we work together and we believe in the Lord, we'll come up out of this. You lack, But when you, you're only built on lust, all that compromise, all that uh, compassion, that go out the window. Oh, you can't, get no, you can't bring no money in? You know all these women nowadays? These black women nowadays always talking about, oh, he got to make at least $100,000 a year. You ain't even worth a hundred thousand dollars. You don't even you don't even respect your husband. How you gonna? I gotta make a hundred thousand a year. But if I make it, you still ain't gonna respect me. That's not gonna make you respect me all of a sudden. Cause once you taste a hundred, you gonna want two. So that's all carnal. We talking about spiritual things, right? First Peter three and eight. First Peter chapter three and verse eight. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Be ye all of one mind. Go ahead. Having compassion one of another. See that. In a relationship, and in marriage in particular, because this is what this, this is first and foremost. It's talking about marriage. It says, "Have finally be your all of one mind, having compassion one of another." Go ahead. Love as brethren. Love as brethren. Go ahead. Be pitiful. Be pitiful. Be courteous. You know when somebody's pitiful, that means they see what you're going through. They sympathize with what you're going through. But when your marriage is only built on lust. When they can't give it to you, you just like, man, tell how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're genuinely in pain. They're genuinely don't understand. They genuinely need a, a pick me up with the scriptures. And you don't, you're not willing to do it. You're not willing to meet your Lord or meet your real halfway because everything that y'all built is built on lust. So you never grow into really being compassionate for that person. You know, when you say your vows, they always say, till death do us part in sickness and in, in health and richer or poor for rich or poor. You know how you say all that stuff like that? Like, that's real. That Listen, your life going to go through ups and downs. Unless you just, 
was an outstanding businessman before y'all got married, or you just had an excellent job, and vice versa. She had an excellent career, or you you was she was an entrepreneur of some sort. And when y'all came together, y'all already had your own money, and then y'all brought that together, and the Lord blessed you in that way. Unless y'all got it popping like that, you gonna struggle. You're gonna have financial troubles. There's going to be sickness. You understand? But all of that is a testament to life. Life gonna change. But if you only if you only with that person off lust, guess what? You ain't gonna be pitiful. You're not going to be courteous, and you're not going to have compassion. Watch this. Go to Sirach 40, verse 1. This is why you got to have compassion for your husband and or for your wife. Sirach chapter 40, verse 1. Great travail is created for every man. Great travail is created for every man. Go ahead. And a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. And a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. Go ahead. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb. From the time we leave the womb. To the day that they return to the mother of all things. To the day that we die. Go ahead. The imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. You see that part right there? I want you to read verse two, just that first part to that first comment. I want y'all to meditate on this. Read it again. The imagination of things to come. You know how, you know how, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me help you out. I'm going I'm to go from both sides. I'm going to deal with the man first. You sisters, especially you sisters that don't work, you at home all day. When your husband is the breadwinner, meaning he bringing in all the income, or if you're bringing in income, you're not bringing in enough to sustain us. You're bringing in a little extra just to put a little bit on top. But it's not really significant enough to, if I got hurt, you could take over with your income. So he the breadwinner. You don't understand the stress we go through at night. Because while you over there sound asleep, we thinking about, damn, it's raining, and it's a hole in the roof. I got to change that outlet in the, in the back room back there, because if I don't change it, baby might take a pen and stick it in there and burn herself or burn himself. You're not thinking about what we're thinking about, because you're not a man. It's not meant for you to think about these things. It's my job. When we go out of town, it's my job to check and make sure that the alarm is set. Because my wife, she'll just fall asleep. <laughs> you understand? Oh, shoot, the alarm ain't on. You understand? Who job is it to think about that? Me? Man? So with that great travail, the Bible says the imagination of things to come. I'm worried about how we going to eat, how we going to pay this bill, how we going to pay that bill. Because you're not... You're not going to get a job. If a bill is due Friday and it's Tuesday, you're not going to make enough money by Friday. To do it. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm the one that's going to do that. So the imagination of things to come is already a heavy yoke that's upon man. Now, I'm going to show you from a woman's perspective because I don't want those sisters to say, well, y'all are always biased. Women have to think about things that men don't have to think about. Like, for instance, the kids. I'm not thinking about that. Do I love my children? Yes, but I'm not thinking about, um, you know, cooking them a meal. I'm not thinking about changing diapers. I'm not thinking about bathing them or uh, educating them throughout the day. I'm not thinking about that. My wife think about those things. So she got a set of worries too. Oh, man, they fall behind their schoolwork. Oh, man, I got to make sure this done at the house. I gotta make so we all got something on us. But when your marriage is only based off lust, you lose that capacity. You forget, dang, she got stuff she got to hold down at the house too. On top of, hey, my Lord got to go to work and he got to deal with people that he don't necessarily like. You understand? Especially eat them. Or niggers that we got to deal with when we go out there in the world. Y'all understand? So we all got something on both sides. The man got problems. The woman got problems. We both have stresses. When you lack, when, you're, when your marriage is based off lust, you forget about those things. You say the hell with it. And that ain't right. Reverse who again? The imagination of things to come. And the day of death trouble their thoughts mm. and cause fear of heart. You see when it said the day of death trouble their thoughts? Men have to think about things like life, uh, life insurance. What will happen if something happened to the kids? We thinking about that. Because women, you bring up death. Oh, God, I don't even want to think about it. Oh, my God, oh, Jesus. We got to think about that stuff. And we prophets. We're going to go out there on the street and we're going to teach the Bible and somebody might kill us out there. 
baby, let me kiss you and the kids, and let me, let's play a prayer before I go to camp. She don't want to think about that, brothers. Your wife don't want to think about having to go on with life without you unless she's a demon and she wants you gone. There's some demons out there too. And if that's you, repent. You understand? So the day of death troubled a man's thoughts. You understand? Fear that we won't be able to pay the bills. Fear that I ain't going to be looked at as a man no more because our house getting foreclosed on. You understand? Or things ain't going right and one of our cars, you come out one morning and one of the cars being dragged out the yard. That ain't happened to me. I didn't came outside and see the tire tracks of cars before. That thing hurts your pride as a man. You feel like you ain't nothing. That's the way this world is meant to make us feel. So when you lack compassion because your, your relationship only built off lust, you don't think about your husband having to deal with that type of stuff or your wife having to deal with what she has to deal with. Go ahead. From him that sitteth on the throne of glory. So it don't matter how much money you got. Go unto, him, unto him that is humbled in earth and ashes. And it don't matter how low you are in this earth. Go ahead. From him that wear purple and a crown. Go ahead. Unto him that is clothed with a linen frock. Read. Wrath. Wrath come upon man. And envy. Envy. Men have envy. Women have envy in them. Go ahead. Trouble. You got trouble. And unquietness. Worry. That's going into worry. Stress. Go ahead. Fear of death. Fear of death. And anger. Anger come upon us all. Go ahead. And strife. Strife come upon us all. We into it with people at the job. We got to handle business at the job. And we got to come home. And now you added me. I got to come home to you. Give me the silent treatment. That ain't compassion. Go ahead. And in the time of rest upon his bed, his night's sleep. Do change his knowledge. You see that? And in, 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 in the time of rest, when he should be sound asleep to prepare himself for the next day, he tossed and turned. Then I got to do this when I get there in the morning. I got to do that when I get up in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. A little or nothing is his rest. He don't get no rest. Go ahead. And afterward, he is in his sleep. Go ahead. As in a day of keeping watch. You know, when you keep watch, you up. I'm looking around. Because remember, our ancestors would keep watch. So that means you weren't going to sleep for this amount of time because you had to protect the whole nation of Israel or the city that you occupied. You had to protect it. And how could you protect it? By staying up looking for the enemy because the enemy coming as a thief in the night. He's not coming during the daytime. He coming when you sleep, sound asleep. That's why you have to have watch. But I got to go to work in the morning. You're going to be here asleep when I leave. I got to get up and go to work. Right? For, for those of you that go to work really, really early in the morning like I do. You understand? So the Bible says a little or nothing is his rest. And afterward, he is in his sleep as in a day of keeping watch. He up all night, tossing and turning because he got problems. He got stresses. He got anger. He got strife. Go ahead. Troubled in the vision of his heart as if he were escaped out of a battle. And you ever see somebody pop about their dream? <laughs> And you're like, what's wrong with you? I feel like I, something's going on in my dream that felt real to me. You understand what I mean? And you're like, wow, this, you, really, you really was dreaming like that? Go ahead. When all is safe, he awaketh and marveleth that the fear was nothing. And then you realize, like, man, that was just a dream. So if your husband having nightmares or if your husband is popping up in the middle of the night as if, as, if a, um, as a man that as, as he's up for watch, Send some compassion come in and say, my Lord, what, what can I do to make things easier on you? That's what compassion come in. What can I do while I'm here at home so you ain't got to worry about this? You just go to work and do what you got to do at work and bring home the money for the family. And while you gone, I'll pay the bills or whatever, or whatever need to be done. You understand? Vice versa, same with your rib. Yes, you might ask your real, you know, hey, babe, you know, you ain't got to, we got a little extra. You ain't got to cook tonight if you're that stressed. I see you got a whole bunch of stuff going on today with the kids and education. I see you in school. You know, so we can eat out tonight if that helps. You understand? Like, it's still ways to help each other. Sometimes I jump in and help my wife with some of the stuff around the house. Not all the time, but sometimes I see she's struggling and I can see the kids going crazy. I can see stress on her. I say, okay, let me, give me baby. I got baby. You know what I'm saying? And you go do what you need to do or you go get a, a bath or whatever. You know, these women don't be wanting to be in the bathtub with their kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, they want, they want, can you hold a baby while I go take a, a bath? Damn. I've been here all day with this kid. And as a husband, you can pass. You say, you know what? I got you. I got you. I got you. I'll bounce my baby on my knee and laugh with her. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully she'll be sleeping about 20 minutes. You know? But that's marriage, though. 
You know, that's marriage. But when it's only built off lust, that's all out the window. There ain't no compassion. You giving up some draws? If I if I keep this baby, you giving up some draws? Come on, bro. What are you doing? Them your kids. Them your kids too. But lack of compassion. Second Peter two verse seven. So when you, when we get into the, to marriage, it can't solely be off lust. Sex is a huge part of marriage, y'all. It is. It is what it is. Husbands and wives come together. That's how our children got here. For those of you who don't have children yet, that's how your children are going to get here. Okay? So that's a part of life. It's a part of marriage. Man and woman were meant to come together. But it's not the only thing in marriage. You understand? And your marriage has to be built off some type of love. It can't, can't only be off lust. Give me that. You, want, you know what I want? Second um, Peter 2 and 7. Mm -hmm. The book of Second Peter. Start at when he says, uh, and I, I say 2 or 1. Second Peter 1 and 7. But start early when he starts talking about the things you need to add to your life. Yes, sir. First, Second Peter chapter one, verse five. That's it. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. So, add to your faith virtue. The word virtue goes into high moral standards. As a man, have some morality about yourself. Same with a woman. Apply God's laws, the moral laws, to your life. Okay, go ahead. And to virtue, knowledge. And add to your virtue the knowledge of God's commandments. Go ahead. And to knowledge, temperance. And then add temperance. What is temperance? How you control yourself, being able to control your lusts, being able to control your mind, having temperance about yourself. Go ahead. And to temperance, patience. And be patient. Go ahead. And to patience, godliness. And, ask that God, and add that godliness to your patience. Go ahead. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Yeah, you see that right there? That's something a lot of us lack. That's that compassion we were reading about. Add to your reading, add what? And to godliness, brotherly kindness. You got to learn to be kind. Sometimes you and your wife or you and your husband not seeing eye to eye or you one of y'all just emotionally in your feelings or both of y'all emotionally in your feelings. But what, what a kindness at? Where's the compassion at? Where's the brotherly love? Where's the pitiful at? Where's the courteous? Where, where are you being courteous? And guess what? Sometimes your wife or your husband not going to apply this scripture. But you can apply it. You can hold your tongue. You understand? You can say, hey, look, all right, well, okay, if you feel that way, then let's sit down, let's really discuss it. What is it that you mad at me about? What is this issue that's arising between us? Because I, like I don't like this space. I don't like my wife walking around the house, you know what I'm saying, call herself mad at me, vice versa. I know she don't like it when I'm mad at her. It's awkward. Ain't it awkward? It's awkward as hell. Like, we're in this, this house and the kids over here doing it. The kids can even feel it. Like, you, you ever be in a room with two people that you know are into it, and you can cut that tension with a knife? And you like, well, maybe I should leave then. If I need to leave, y'all need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, you feel it. Like, I don't want to be in this space because I'm happy, and y'all two seem like y'all had it, so I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Remember, in, uh, um, uh, you ever seen um, He Got Game? And on He Got Game, Ray Allen was sitting down on the couch and he was telling his uncle and his aunt about how uh, he was getting college scholarship offers. And they didn't believe him. They're like, no, you get some money offer. But the auntie like, I don't want to have nothing to do with that. So they started to get into it. Well, take your big ass in the bedroom. That's what he told him. Take your big ass in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? They were going at each other's neck. And he's like, man, don't talk to us like that. Why y'all letting this, this bring y'all apart? He could feel the tension. You understand what I mean? I ain't got time for that. <laughs> What that lady say? Nobody got. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I don't have time to be in tour with my real. I got too much crap to do. Too much thing. Too many things to think about. Then to think about being in tour with you. What is it? That's it. Oh, you you got the spirit, sis man. Check your spirit. No, all I say, check your spirit. I ain't got time for. It. Not for to argue with you. Vice versa. You know what I mean? Don't argue with your husband about petty, stupid stuff. Learn. When you see he's stressed, to hold your tongue. Why are you bombarding him with stuff? And you see the brother just got, I just got here. Like, I'm, I just got here. Shalom. When you marry for lust, you never truly get to learn your spouse or understand them. It's oftentimes hard for you to be compassionate when they are struggling with their issues, whether it be sickness or your everyday struggles or your job, relationships. They could have got rebuked. You know, we in the truth, right? We got people to 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 um, 
that we have to report to in the truth. And sometimes a brother get corrected, and you know he. He, he, because we don't like to feel, we don't like to feel like we're not doing right. You know what I'm saying? Like as men, like we want to do right in our, especially in our ranks. If we've been given the job as a captain, or as an officer, a soldier, we want to follow through. We want leadership to be like, hey man, good job. I'll praise to the Lord. Do you understand what I mean? You don't want to feel like you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So sometimes we come home and we might have just got rebuked on top of all the pile of things that we had to go through throughout the day. You understand? But when our relationship was only built off that lust. When that wears off, and it will wear off, you understand? We need some type of compassion. We need that love for each other, okay? Also, when your marriage is only built off lust, you have a lack of patience and mercy, right? Let's go to um, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 14. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. So it says, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded. Sometimes you emotional. That's it. And men, as men, you can say men shouldn't be emotional, but everybody get the devil on them at one point or another. Everybody get a little emotional, and they had to snap back. The key is, I know the scriptures, so I'm supposed to snap back. I can't be thinking like that. I'm men. I got too much stuff to do. I can't be sitting up here being emotional. Same thing with a woman. I can't be sitting up here being all emotional about every little thing he say to me. He right. That's what the scriptures say. But the Bible says you're supposed to comfort those that are feeble-minded, that struggle with these things. Right? Go ahead. See that none render evil read it again, for evil. Read again, verse oh. 14. Yes, sir. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, uh -huh. comfort the feeble-minded. Comfort the feeble-minded. Go ahead. Support the weak. Support those that are weak, that are weak in faith. Right? Go ahead. Be patient toward all men. And guess what? To do all that, what do you have to do? Be patient. You got to be patient towards your spouse. You have to. You know, it ain't always about, you know, what they, can, what they bring to the table sexually. It has to be some type of uh, patience, some type of mercy, some type of comfort. You understand? Um, I'm going to say this. If you got an attitude, I don't want none. Get out of my face. You know, if you got an attitude with me, I, what, what, what are we doing here? Because when we come together, we're supposed to come together in love. You understand? In reciprocity. You know what reciprocity means? Meaning what I give, you give. When I give, you give. The Bible also calls that due benevolence. That's reciprocity. But when it's tension, I don't want it. Because that ain't the spirit. How did the spirit ain't in this? When the spirit in it, you know the spirit there. You, when, you, when you and your wife are loving each other and y'all in the right head space and y'all both on one accord and she want to be with you and you want to be with her, them be the best times. But when it's forced or when there's uh, all that, man, bro, I don't want it. I'm good. You understand? I'm just going here and just breathe some scripture. But biblical smoke, anyone? <laughs> Clubhouse, anyone? I'm going to go over here in Clubhouse. I just prophesied, prophesied until I fall asleep. Hell. I'm not going to sit up here and beg or, or, or force. I'm not doing it. I will not do it. I refuse to do it. Why? Because it shouldn't be like that. I should not have to do that. But at the, in the same token, if I expect that as a man, there's certain energy, or let me start using energy because that sounds worldly. There's a certain spirit I also got to put out there. I got to make her want to be with me too by how I deal with her. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's it's a balance to this thing. Like, we can say what we want to say. You can say, like, yeah, just mm -hmm, be quiet. And just You know, and you could say that, and, and it ain't going to be the same. You know what I mean? That you're just trying to just get one in. But for the most part, it needs to be something like, like if you want her to be in that same headspace with you, sometimes you got to know how to talk. You gotta, brothers, you got to have some game. Some of y'all ain't got no game. That's what, I'm going to be 100 with you. You have no game. You, sex. Now, like, what? what? the hell am I, a robot? What the, right, what the hell? Is this? No, like, you went one of your white game in, sex. Now, what? Sis, get the hell out of here with that. Go back in there and, and, and take a chill pill. Then come back in here with some sexiness. Put on some lingerie or something. Don't come up in here talking about some, yeah, we're going to, no. <laughs> That's manly. I don't want that. No, I want you to come up in here. Give me that look. I need that look. Like, 
I need you. I need to be on the couch, and you come to the door, and you peek your head around the corner. You remember that? Uh, you know how when you draw, like you know how when you was young, you would draw. It'd be like a line, and you put like the little nose peeking out, and you can make eyes on it. It's, th- it's for those people that can't draw like me. I can't draw, so you would put in there be like the nose going around the corner like that. That's what I need you to do. Stick your head around the corner like. You know what I'm saying? Like that's sexy to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I like that. Do that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But don't be, or don't want it, and then don't tell me you want it. Like, I don't understand that. Why, ain't, why y'all do that? Why you, why you women do that? You want it just as bad as I don't want it. But I don't know that you want it. You know, or I don't, you know, I'm, whatever. I'm my mind on a thousand things. And you still that man. <clears throat> you ain't got a power, baby. <laughs> if you want it, let me know you want it. What the hell going on? You ain't got a power for nothing. You ain't got a bag daddy for nothing. That's the way, this is the mindset that we talking about marriage right now. This is where it had to be in your marriage. You understand? You're not going to always be able to read each other's mind. I don't know what you want. Vice versa, you don't know what I want all the time. I have to express what it is I expect from you. You have to express what it is you want from me. Communication is key. But a lot of y'all, you have no game. You don't know how to communicate. You understand? Like what, what uh, Pop said, what, he said, what uh, Ice Cube say? I got all the game. I know exactly what, okay, okay. I know what to say. You understand? Go to um, Matthew 9, 13. So it says be patient toward all men. Okay? Watch what Christ says here. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So Christ's mission when he came to the earth was to bring mercy to the nation of Israel, to give us mercy because under sacrifice, it was <clears throat> you going to do this or you going to die. That ain't marriage. You going to do this or you going to... No, 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 no. Marriage is compassion. Marriage is patience. Marriage is mercy. You understand? Marriage is looking out for each other. And that's the way it got to be. And this is, this is me coming with a logical reproach. Now, we rebuke the sisters a lot. We've been, especially lately, because a lot of these modern-day women, they really, really evil. You understand? A Babylonian women are really wicked. Um, but we got a, a, a remnant of sisters in this truth that really do believe the scriptures. And they want to do right, but their nature and the way that it was raised is causing them to go away. And we have to constantly check that. But now that we're checking that and they're starting to get themselves right, this is, our, this is now the approach. This is our approach, not only towards her, but also towards the man on what he could be doing. Okay? Because it is a two-way street. Now go to Colossians 3 and 12. So we read Matthew 9, 13. Christ said he came to, 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 to bring mercy and not sacrifice, meaning it's the sacrificial law, which under two or three witnesses you will put to death for committing certain sins. Christ gave that mercy for us to get it right in these last days. That's true mercy. And that's what you got to show to your wife. That's what you got to show to your husband. Mercy, compassion, being pitiful, courteous. Why? Because it ain't built off of lust. It's built off of love. Right now, watch this. Read that for me. Colossians three and twelve. Colossians chapter three, verse twelve. Yes, sir. Put on therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy. Bowels of mercy. Go ahead. Kindness. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Humbleness of mind. Have a humble mind. Go ahead. Meekness. Read. Long suffering. You got to be long suffering, cause guess what? She gonna make mistakes, and sisters, he gonna make mistakes. Some of you sisters are so headstrong that when your husband do make a mistake. You use that as an excuse to leave. I'm not talking about adultery. You understand? Or physical abuse, which even though the Bible does say you can't go nowhere until he die. But if he put his hands on you, beating on you, then you got to make a decision. You got to call the police, first of all. You understand? But I'm just talking about so quick to give up on somebody because they make mistakes. That cannot be because if that's the case, then, you know, why, 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 why are we here? You know what I mean? We should all be dead because we've all done things worthy of death if you read the Old Testament. You read the Old Testament, start reading them laws. But while we do the law class, you're supposed to see yourself in there like, ooh, ooh, that was me. That was me right there. I'm supposed to be dead according to that law. But Christ had bowels of compassion towards us. So now he wants us to do the same for each other. Read it again, verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, Read. Meekness, long suffering. Go ahead. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. So forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Go ahead. 
If any man have a quarrel against any. If you got a quarrel or a complaint against your brother or sister, go ahead. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You hear that? That's mercy. That's patience. That's compassion. When you only built on lust, you ain't getting that. I'm telling you, you're not getting it. Sirach 36. Told y'all it's not going to be a long class. I'm almost done already. Sirach 36, verse 22. Sirach chapter 36, verse 22. The beauty of a woman cheered the countenance. So we love it when y'all, but listen, listen, sisters. Your husband love it when he come home and you dressed up. When we come home and you still got the nightgown on, okay, and you still look like you look when we left, I don't care how busy you is, you take an hour to put, get yourself together. I had the kid, okay. Uh, we got any older kids around here? How old are you? Is? Oh, you 13? Okay, well, you hold that baby while mama will get herself together for a minute. What the hell going on? You know what I'm saying? Them babies ain't up all day. And if they is, you watch Miss, what's her name? Miss Monica. You watch Miss Monica. And you watch, you watch Dora or whatever the hell. I need 10 minutes to get dressed because daddy on his way home and he want me looking good. You understand? Don't have that crust in your eye when I get home, please. That's for every man. We love it when y'all look good. We love it when y'all beautiful. We love to tell y'all, some men, not all of them. And if you, if you struggle with this, brothers, work on it. Sometimes you tell your rib, hey, when I get home, go on be dressed. We going, we going, we going out. You know, they love that, man. They love that type of stuff. I'm telling you, these women be wanting to go out. They want to be on your arm. They want to be seen with their husband. I'm telling you, unless she's a demon. Now, if you got a demon at the house, then that's something different. She don't want to be seen with you because she want to be seen by her, her work husband. You understand? She'll go to lunch with him before she go to dinner with you. And you got some decisions to make, brother. I'd be damned. If I, boy, I wish. Okay. <laughs> I almost lost it for a minute. You understand? I'm going out to eat with such and such on our lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sway. <laughs> I don't care if he in the truth. <laughs> I don't care if you work with Officer Soraya. You ain't going out to eat with no damn body. You understand? I'll bring you something to eat. Matter of fact, I got a lunch break in an hour. I'll bring you something to eat. Because when you're sharing a meal, that's a, that's a, that's a time when you know, you kind of you you kind of lower your inhibitions. You know what I'm saying? You lower your guard. When we share, when I'm sharing a meal with somebody, that's a time to really have a discussion. A lot of times, some of your best conversations is what over a meal. That's an intimate setting. Ain't no way my wife sitting down. I don't care if it's Nukes, Burger King, or damn, uh, what's that place on uh, 55? A uh, Char. You understand with the lamb? You not sitting down having no intimate meal with no damn man. What the hell going on up in here? You understand? So. You know, these are things that we want to take you out. We want to, to see you beautify, you know what I'm saying, and go places with you, you know. Uh, and if your husband lacked that, pray for him, sis. Pray for him. Pray, pray that he get a spirit on him to, to want to take you out and go places with you. That's good stuff right there. That's good stuff. You know what I mean? And, you, and every relationship needed. Some of you, you know who you are. Some of you, mm -mm, ain't nobody watching my kids. In the, okay, all right. Well, you keep them kids then. And you stay with them kids on your dinner. Do you go on your date? And you gotta, y'all be quiet. Y'all sitting over there. Yeah, let me get a, a, a filet mignon. Hey, look, put that down. What is y'all? You know, you do that. You go ahead and do all that. I don't want that smoke. Hey, uh, can you also to keep the kids? It's called such and such. This she. You feel comfortable? Such and such coming to the house? Yeah, good, good, good. We're gonna clean up. Everything set up for. And then you, 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 you leave the kid there. Me and Mike, we gonna go out. You know that what I mean? Like that's beautiful. Especially after them eighty days up. Y'all brothers, they got kids. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Them 40 days or them 80 days. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to get, I ain't trying to be quick. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be just ah, out of there. No, 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 no. I need time. You understand? We need time. We need some time to enjoy each other's company. Right? Because we ain't been able to be together for a while. So these are all things. The beauty of a woman cheer the counsel. It cheer us up when you look beautiful, ladies. Go ahead. The beauty of a woman cheered the countenance. Go ahead. And a man loveth nothing better. See that? We love that thing. We love to see you beautified. Come on. If there be kindness, meekness, uh -huh. and comfort in her tongue, then is not her husband like other men. You hear that? If that's supposed to kind, she meek, she know how to comfort a man, she know how to tell her brother, hey, don't even worry about that. You a king. They don't know who the hell they talking to at that job. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I come home, I be like, man, mm, 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 like, damn, mm. You know what I'm saying? It'd be good when your wife be like, yeah, I understand what you got to go through, baby. But, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They, they don't know who they're talking to. And you a prophet of God that she rubbing your back. You a prophet. You know what I'm saying? 
Nah, yeah, you know, I am a damn prophet. You right. <laughs> I am a prophet. You know what I'm saying? Then he get up and he go work the next day. Why? Because he know you appreciate that thing. That's what men want. I'm telling you, I'm putting y'all sisters on game. Some of y'all don't listen. We be putting y'all on game every week and then y'all go do the same stuff and piss your husband off. Right? Kiri? He that getteth the wife begineth a possession. Go ahead. A help like unto himself. Read. And a pillar of rest. Can, can You need a pillar of rest. A pillar is support. We need you to be our rest, not our stress, sisters. Go ahead. Where no hedge is. Where no hedge is. There the possession is spoiled. There the, the possession is spoiled. Go ahead. And he that have no wife will wander up and down morning. So we need our wives. We love our wives. We want, we want you to be with us. You understand? We want to enjoy each other's company. We ain't got time to be at each other's throat all day, every day. No, I ain't got time for that. I want to come home and everything be smooth. You understand? Now give me that article I had. It's an article about the trends and the link between premarital sex and um, marital stability. All right, so let's start at the top. You don't have – well, you can read that. The, the title. title. Yes, sir. Counterintuitive trends in the link between premarital sex and marital, marital stability. So premarital sex and, and marital stability, they, they are linked. They are linked. All right, go ahead. American sexual behavior is much different than it used to be. Meaning we done got worse. We done waxed worse and worse. That's what that means. Go ahead. Today, most Americans think premarital sex is okay. Uh-huh. And will have three or more sexual partners before marrying. What, if anything, does premarital sex have to do with marital stability? Let's see. This research brief, research brief shows that the relationship between divorce and the number of sexual partners women have prior to marriage is complex. Mm. I explored this relationship using data from the three most recent waves of the National Survey of Family Growth, uh -huh. collected in 2002, 2006 to 2010, and 2011 to 2013. For women marrying since the start of the new millennium, mm -hmm. women with 10 or more partners were the most likely to divorce. But this only became true in recent years. So when a woman has 10 or more partners, She's most likely to divorce or leave her husband. This is what we're going into about that lust. Why the marriage cannot be built on lust. Brothers, I know a lot of y'all are burning. I know you burning. I know you want a wife. But a lot of our sisters have had more than 10 sexual partners. And it ain't none of my business that she had that many partners before she came into the truth. Because I only know who she is today. Unless she wants to divulge that type of information to leadership... That's none of my concern, but I am concerned with how she working on that spirit that she had when she was in the world. She had that horrid spirit on her. Okay, what are you doing to combat that? Are you talking to senior sisters that are married? Are you talking to sisters in the world, uh, I mean, in the truth, excuse me, that um, went through the proven process successfully and that are now married? Even if they ain't been married that long. Like a sister been only been married three years or four years, okay. But did she go through the proven process successfully? And if she did, that's who you should be talking to. Sis, how did you do it? What did you do? What questions did you ask? What, what, what counsel did you ask from leadership? You understand what I'm saying? These are the things you should be asking to help you. Because you know you come out of a lifestyle where you had 10 or more sexual partners. The, 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 the statistics show you're more likely to be divorced later on. Why? Because it's hard for you to pair bond with a man. You understand what I'm saying? This is why premarital sex is linked to the stability of your marriage, right? Go back. All right, next. Women with three to nine partners were less likely to divorce than women with two partners. And women with zero to one partner were the least likely to divorce. So basically, virgins or someone that's only been with one person. And that one person was probably their husband that they end up marrying, okay? So they're less likely to divorce. Now, um, it was something I wanted to show on this. Go down real quick. Uh, yes, let's look at this chart, this table one. Let's look at this chart real quick. Table one. So you see on table one, you got the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and the 2010s. Now, I want y'all to see something, brothers and sisters. Zero partners, meaning virgins. In, in, in 1970, 21% of women that, was in this, that, that took this survey were virgins. In the 1980s, it dropped to 17. The 90s, 14. The 2000s, 12. And in the 2010s, 5% of women that took the survey uh, were virgins when they got married. 5%. That's, whew. Now, 
and that's now dropped to the bottom. Let's go from the, the least extreme to the most extreme. So 10 plus partners in 1970s, only 2% of women that took this survey had 10 plus partners, only 2%. 1980s, 4%. 90s, 10%. 2014 and in 2010s, 18% of women that took this survey have been with 10 different men, right? So what is that showing you that has happened as time has progressed? We have less, less virgins and we have more sisters that have had multiple sexual partners. That affects marriage. That's why when you brothers choose these sisters, it's not to say that these sisters can't become righteous women of God. We're not saying that because the Bible can change anyone. It changed me. It can change any of us. But, the, but what it is saying is you have to closely examine this sister instead of just jumping into the marriage or jumping into the relationship because of lust. When you do that, you sell yourself short. You don't give her the opportunity to grow. She don't give you the opportunity to grow. And now all these spirits are just coming back on you, right? Uh, go to the book of Leviticus 19.29. So we could drop that survey. I ain't going to get too deep into it. Uh, Leviticus 19, verse 29. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 29. Yes, sir. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. So don't prostitute your daughter to cause her to be a whore. Go ahead. Unless the land fall to whoredom. Read. And the land become full of wickedness. That's what we just saw. Remember it said American standards as far as premarital sex today is a lot different than what it was. That's because the land has fallen to whoredom. Because men decided to prostitute their daughters, allow their daughters to live a uh, sexual, lustful lifestyle. You understand? To have boyfriends and things of that nature. Now it's gotten bad on this earth. It's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Some of these women out here, they vultures. You understand what I'm saying? Like they can smell like, oh, I'm going to tell you, he married. Oh, I'm, I want him. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, since he married. Yeah, but married guys be the best because they can't say nothing. So you can, you know, uh, em, what they call that, embezzle, embezzle money from them. Or you can trick them out of money. Or you can say, well, I'm going to show your wife the messages. I'm going to show your wife the videos and the pictures. Now he buying you a, a, a house. You understand? Extortion. That's it. Not embezzlement. Extortion. Embezzlement what your pastor do. Um, <laughs> I had to take a shot. Uh, Exodus twenty two sixteen. So uh, <laughs> say bah, shot five. Exodus twenty two sixteen. Exodus chapter twenty two verse sixteen. Go ahead. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. He shall endow that woman to be his wife. You're supposed to make it right if you have sex with the sister. If you have sex with the sister, you're supposed to make it right. You're supposed to marry that woman. Now, there's a few different scenarios to this. First and foremost, am I jumping too far ahead? <clears throat> Remind me to come back and read that. I don't want to read that yet. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to discuss that yet. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. So the reason divorce rates are higher with higher sexual par partner counts is because those women haven't learned what love is according to the Bible. Go to Leviticus 19.17. The reason divorce happens because this woman has been with these various different sexual partners. She has not learned how to pair bond. She has lost that ability in a lot of ways. And that's something that has to be re-recovered. You understand? It has to be brought back. Okay? And so, and, in a spiritual sense. Go ahead. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Go ahead. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor uh -huh. and not suffer sin upon him. So this is love. Okay, go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Uh -huh. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So women that have been with multiple sexual partners oftentimes hold grudges. Why? Because a lot of those sexual partners were with men that they really thought that they were going to have a full, long-term relationship with. They thought this was going to be the one. That's how these men get you women out your draws. They start telling, oh, I love you, girl. I'll always be with you. And he may commit for six months, maybe even a year. But he playing you, sis, because I was that guy. I know the mindset. You understand? Many of us men that's in the body that are leadership, we were those guys. Not many of us were married um, at 18, 19. No, some of us didn't get married until our 30s, 40s even, late 20s, whatever the case may be. So we had our days where we did stupid stuff. So now we're telling you now that 
when a man comes to you and he and he says that he's gonna do this and he's gonna do that, the Bible has to show if he's really truthful. That's what proving is. That's what counsel is. That's what leadership is, right? To help you to be that father to you that you never had. But oftentimes, because you never felt true love, you don't know what the Bible says. Nobody's ever held you accountable. Guess what? Guess what? You hold grudges. You don't know how to love your neighbor. You don't know how to love your husband. That's why you hold grudges against him. You mad at him for no reason. You don't know because you've been with all these men. So now a brother go jump in a relationship with you because you're beautiful to him. That don't make sense, bro. You got to remember the scriptures. I know you're horny, but you got to remember scriptures. You know what I mean? You got to fast and pray. Now give me the one where it says in Numbers, if her father had but spit in her face. Because none of us, I ain't going to say none of us, a lot of us didn't have a father. And a, and a large majority of us didn't have a father that was in the truth. Okay, read that for me. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face. If her father had but spit in her face. Go ahead. Should she not be ashamed seven days? Should she what? Not be ashamed seven days? If her daddy had just spit in her face, if he had corrected her and put her in place, she wouldn't have to be ashamed by having leprosy and kicked out of the, the congregation for speaking against her younger brother Moses, who the Lord uh, ordained a prophet. She would have known not to speak against the prophets of God, not to hold grudges. She was holding a grudge. She was mad at Moses. You understand? So all these things are things we need to be paying attention to when we talk about getting married. Are you trying to build your marriage on lust or are you trying to build your marriage on love? Because if it's love, you got to know that I can correct her. She don't hold no grudges against me. You understand? She loved me as she loved herself. She got compassion towards me, vice versa. I got compassion towards her. Don't worry. Things going to arise during the proving process. If you do the proving process right, there are going to be issues and things that arise that you're going to have to seek counsel on or that you're going to have to make decisions about or that you're going to have to have a discussion with that person about. You understand what I mean? If you do it the right way, if you ask the right questions, if you follow counsel. And for those, that you are, that, for those of you that are married already, you understand? You still have to work on this. Truly loving your neighbor as yourself. John 13, 34 and 35. Mm, okay. The book of John, chapter 13 and verse 34. Yes, sir. A new commandment I give unto you, that, right. ye, that ye love one another. Mm -hmm. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Go ahead. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if... You have love one to another. You want to know how you want to know that sister really follow Christ, brothers. See if she really love her sisters, and if she really love you. Has she grown? Has she grown to love you in your proving process? Like by the time you end proving, you, she's supposed to know. I love this man. I want to be with this man. Vice versa. I love this sister. I want to be with this sister. I betrothed her. I take her off the market. Nope, that's mine right there. We just waiting for the date. She over limits. You understand? But you know what I mean, though. To be honest, um, that's how you know if a sister really follow Christ and she know how to love her neighbor, I mean, the other sisters in the body, and she know how to love you, vice versa. Watch that brother. See how he deal with his brothers. He not going to tell you he into it with his brothers because he a man, and men deal with stuff with each other. I'm not going to go to my wife and say, yeah, I was a riot, pissed me off. Ain't none of her damn business. You understand what me and my brother got going on? Because we men, and we can discuss it. But you still have to watch that man to see if he a man of God, if he love his neighbor, if he love his leadership, if he follow counsel. Same with you, brother. Some of these sisters want to get married, but they never go talk to leadership. It's a problem. That means she's still holding a grudge. Leadership may have corrected her in the past. So they may have had something go on. And you're like, man, I really want to, I want to, want to prove that, sister. You should be coming to ask leadership, hey, hey, I never see sister such and such come to the table. Does she talk to y'all? Does she talk to a counselor? She... No, she don't talk to us. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm going to pass. You understand? So if you still want to get married, you do need to be count, getting counsel so you can be guided correctly. Matthew 22 and verse 36. So we went through a few scriptures just talking about love. Christ said, love, love your brother uh, as I have loved you, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. So Christ died for us. Christ taught us. He respected us as a people. He had compassion on us. Right? Go ahead. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. Go ahead. Master, 
Which is the great commandment in the law? Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, Read. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. So you got to love God with all your heart. Go ahead. And with all thy soul. Uh-huh. And with all thy mind. So that's important. Go ahead. This is the first and great commandment. That's the great commandment. Read. And the second is like unto it. Read. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. See if that brother or sister love their neighbor as themselves before you start talking about you want to marry them. See if they love you as themselves. See if they love their other brothers and sisters in the body as themselves. See if they really about what they be talking about. Or is it just lust? They're just handsome to you. Or she's just beautiful to you. Go ahead. On these two commandments hang all the law. On, go ahead. And the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now we're going to change gears real quick. Um, so what if somebody, so what if we were already together? All right. We was already together. We was um, having relations. And then we came into truth. And we decided, look. We need to go and get married because we're together uh, and we don't want to be in sin. Okay. And that's been done before, right? And, I, and I've seen some of these relationships be successful. But what I always find is an issue in those type of relationships is lust is involved. It's involved. Brothers and sisters, it is involved. When you decide we was getting it in in the world, we were boyfriend and girlfriend, whatever. But we weren't going to get married until we heard the truth. Like, I was like, nah, I can't, she can't be my wife right now. Mm -mm. Then you come to the truth and you hear the scriptures. And you say, look, let's go ahead and get married. Lust is involved. I'm going to show you how lust is involved. You were not willing to stop smashing for a year. Because the, 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 the counsel is, hey, y'all approved for a year. As men and women of God in this truth, y'all didn't take that time to do that. You barely knew anything and you got married. Now that's your wife, now that's your husband in the truth. And you get kids and all that stuff like that. Time go on and y'all start to, you know, go through your trials and tribulations and things of that nature. But a lot of times those relationships are built off lust. Because if it wasn't built off lust, you'd say, you know what, man, uh -uh. sis, we done been together before, but we new creatures in Christ. You stay on that sister's side, bro. I'm going to stay on this brother's side. I do want to be with the sister, but I do realize we're not right in the scriptures. You say no, you skip that step, you get married, and you struggle. You struggle. You understand? But that's expected. Now what you going to do? Because during that process, you don't get a chance to, are they down for the struggle? You don't know that. You don't know if they're down for the struggle yet. Because y'all ain't been in this truth together, going through trials together. Y'all was just smashing in the world, or boyfriend and girlfriend, you know that BS, which is really just smashing, because you ain't got no intention to get married. Um, do they have issues from their past that may hinder your growth? You don't, you're not thinking about that. You're testing the goods. You ain't thinking about all the different stuff. Does she got schizophrenia in her family? Is he crazy? Is his mama and them crazy? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not thinking about that. Um, do they have children? You ain't thinking about that, right? Lust to blind you, bro. Lust to make you say, "Yeah." I... You know, every time I come over there, he be hanging off the the, the rafters in the in the roof. But you know, I'm still gonna marry him because I can't go a year improving her. I gotta keep getting. I gotta keep hitting it. I'm just being honest. Her her son will be hanging from the rafters in the school like some monkey balls. You come outside, he stay. You ever seen Jumanji when them when the monkeys tow that car up? That's her son. He tear your stuff up. I'm talking about you come in there, he pulling the, the, the fabric off of the sheets, your leather seats. He done found a knife and cutting your leather seats. And he looks just looking at you like, and she said, oh, she laughing. What the hell are you? This little nigga. Stay in the smack. I might, have, I might have smacked this little dude, man. Is you going to pay for that? Is his daddy going to pay for that? Is his daddy in his life? Like, you never... Lust to blind you. You'll say, no, we both believe. We both watching YouTube video. Damn it, we getting married. But that ain't enough. That's not enough. So do they have mental issues? And I don't, when I say mental issues, I don't mean they, they crazy because half these damn women crazy. Matter of fact, 99% of these women crazy. Okay, one, some way, shape, or form. And it's masked by emotion. Okay. But I'm talking about really crazy. I'm talking about uh, bury your drawers in the yard, like Labusa said. You know, I'm talking like crazy, uh, uh, voodoo type stuff, seance type stuff. I got his belt, his T-shirt, his Under Armour, his. You understand? It said her mama they put a root on you. They said put a root. You know what I'm saying? You're like, what the hell? 
this woman crazy. Or put a menstrual blood in your in your in your in your spaghetti. Y'all know women that did that dumb stuff. I'm telling you, girl, that's how you gonna get it. My daddy's telling me they said, don't ever eat a woman's spaghetti. I just like, what are you talking about? Man, she do this, 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 and that. I was like, man, that is disgusting. And I never ate a woman's spaghetti after that, though. <laughs> I was superstitious as hell. You understand what I mean? Because that's an old Negro, that's stupid stuff black people do. You understand what I mean? Like stupid, uh, superstitious stuff black people do, especially when they unrepentant. But I'm saying she might deal with stuff like that. You understand? I get in my white car, she got a damn, the air freshener. It's a supernova on it. I said, take that off and throw that in the damn trash. Don't the scriptures say that you ain't supposed to be, uh, what did it say uh, in Jeremiah 10? Be not dismayed at the stars or the signs of heaven. They know what they say. And I know it's an air freshener. I just don't like what it say on there. It says supernova. Get that out the truck now for we all die. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking in my mind, that's idolatry. And it may not be idolatry, but it look like it. The Bible say, abstain from what, brothers? All appearance of evil. Get that out the truck. Okay? And she wasn't doing it on purpose. She just goofy and a woman and just grab. It's an air freshener. It's going to smell really good. <laughs> Get that out of the town. But that's why they need husbands, right? What I say, what I tell you, women are susceptible to idols. You'll come home and she'll have Christmas lights all over the house. You'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's that for? It's the Feast of Dedication. Okay, what scriptures say they had LED Christmas lights up on the... Well, they don't say that. Okay, well, take them down. What are you doing? Oh, I ordered this thing. It looks just like a menorah. It got nine candles on it. That's Amalek. What are you doing? It's supposed to have seven. Get rid of that damn. So these women, I'm telling you, you got to watch them 24-7, boy. So you add that on top of she got family issues, mental issues, and you don't prove her. You just jump right into the marriage. This, these are things that you must take into consideration. All right, give me that YouTube video I had. So a lot of these women are out here having babies by these dudes that still laying on their mama couch or they stay with five of their homeboys and then you had a baby and then you get mad because they can't provide. So now you're like, oh, I'm not trusting these. No, honey, you can't trust what you picked. Oh. That's the thing. She ain't right on. She ain't wrong with what she's saying. She right. She ain't wrong with what she's saying. A lot of y'all sisters made these decisions and you don't know his background or nothing. Like, during the proven, whether it's during the proven process or let's move on to the category now. Whether when y'all was doing what y'all was doing, he didn't have a job. Then you say, man, I heard the scripture. Let's get married. No, let's stop having sex. <laughs> let's just stop doing it. You understand? Because if we keep doing it, then we eventually going to have to get married. So let's stop it. And you go on the congregation and you go on your side, I go on my side. But for those people that have done that and it's in the past now and you married now, it can work. I'm going to say it for you again. For those of you that was together in the world, heard the scriptures, got married, even though you didn't give yourself a time to prove each other uh, marriage-wise, it can work. But both of y'all got to have your mind right. It will not work if you don't have your mind right. Exodus 22, 16. Now, read that again now. It will not work if y'all not willing to work. Do you understand what I mean? Because y'all didn't go through what God says you're supposed to go through. You didn't even give a chance time to, you didn't even give yourself a time to, or a chance to really even hear it or learn it. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed mm -hmm. and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. If a father utterly... Sorry, read again, verse 20, 22, verse 16, one more time. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed mm -hmm. and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So some of y'all heard that scripture while y'all was smashing and said, let's go and get married. So you went ahead and got married. Okay, that's in the past now. You're married. Marriage is honorable in the eyes of God, but you're struggling. You know why you're struggling? Because you didn't really fully prove each other. So now, now you're in this predicament. You're married. You got children. It's been a couple years. Where do we go from here? Is our marriage doomed? No. But y'all got to put in work. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Y'all got to put in work. You cannot use the excuse, oh, I should have proved the sister. That's over with now, bro. You married. Oh, I should have proved him first. Okay, maybe so. But y'all married now. Y'all got children now. Y'all been together for however many years now. What you going to do now, okay? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Go ahead. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, Read. he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So when you are in Christ, you are a new creature. It's a clean slate, all right? So it's time that we marry now. 
We've been together in the world, but we weren't married in the world, but now we're married now. In the truth, we heard the scriptures, we got married, we're together. Now, it's time to put off those old thoughts. You married in the truth now. And in the truth, marriage is much different in the world. In the truth, you can't just storm out the house and just go, so I'm going to stay in somebody else's house. Nope. I'm going to stay with my mama tonight. Oh, no, you ain't going to bring her in our business. <laughs> you can go in that other room, <laughs> but you're going to be right here where I can see you. You ain't going out of here. Vice versa. As a man, I ain't leaving my house. How I look leaving my house? I'm just going to leave. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Bills in my name. I ain't going nowhere. You understand what I mean? You got to work it out. You got to stand there and go through it. You understand? Um, so just because you're a new creature in Christ does not mean the things that you overlooked before you uh, really proved each other are not going to be things that continue to come up. Why? Because Paul said this, 1 Corinthians 5, 31. So you may say, well, if I'm a new creature in Christ and we heard the scriptures and got married and we're in the truth now, then why do I have to worry about the things that happened in our past? Um, because you didn't prove each other. So there are still things that you're learning about each other. I don't care how long you've been married. Me and my wife still learn stuff about each other. We've been together a long time. I know brothers that have been, been married 30, 40, 50 years, and they still learning things about their spouse, especially when you come into Christ because you see things differently now. You see it through a biblical lens, okay? Read 1 Corinthians 5, 15 and 31. 1 okay. Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. Yes, sir. I protest, protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. He said, I die daily. Why he said I die daily? Because now that I'm in Christ, I'm noticing things about myself that I never noticed. Now that you're in Christ, you start realizing, wait a minute, she, I don't like the way she do that. I don't like the way she say that. She ain't got no type of patience at all. That's just the one stuff her way. My, son, my wife got a little bit of a Jezebel spirit on her. You ain't never even, but you didn't know. Because y'all was getting it in and heard the scriptures and got married. Vice versa. He don't really like to communicate. He won't even tell me how he feel. He won't even tell me what's going on. He won't even keep me in the loop on things. He's stubborn. I, I, I'm trying to look out for him, but he's stubborn. He won't, vice versa. She's stubborn as hell. You didn't know that before y'all got married. Why? Because the scriptures reveal things about each other. Give me that uh, Hebrew 4 and 12 about how the scriptures discern. The Bible is what discern what a person is or how a person's spirit is. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Go ahead. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit uh -huh. and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the scriptures are a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. You bring out certain scriptures, you're going to find out what your wife deal with. Certain classes come out or certain things you discuss with your husband, you're going to realize what they deal with because the word of God reveals it. Now watch this. Go to Sirach 25 real quick. I'm going to show you how it reveals stuff. Um, Sirach 25 and let's read uh, 22. Sirach chapter 25. 20, verse 20. And verse 20. As the climbing up a sandy way is to the feet of the age. So an aged old man climb up a sandy way. Go ahead. So is a wife full of words to a quiet man. You hear that? But you overlooked that because you was trying to get it in in the world. She talked way too much. You ever see a woman just talk too much? I can't stand it. You still talking? Didn't you see I got quiet? When I got quiet, that means I don't want to hear nothing else. Most of the times, my wife talked to me, and I'd be like, what'd you say? What is that telling you, sisters? When you've been talking and talking and talking and talking with no, with no breathing room, and then he, at the end of all you said, he say, you talking to me? He ain't listening. I don't want to hear that right now. It ain't time. Come back later. You know what I'm saying? Because right now I ain't hearing it. That's when you come and say, my Lord, can I talk to you for a minute? Now you got my attention. Now I might say, yeah, baby, come on. What's, up? What's going on? It's the way you can because you gave me the option to say, no, 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 give me a minute. Let me. Or, yeah, come on. Now, I got, now I'm going to listen to you because I've given you my attention. But you just coming and just running your mouth. You know what I was thinking? Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, I, I didn't know what you was thinking because I, I can't read your mind. Right now, I'm in a zone. I'm studying. I'm doing, I'm, what is it? And I ain't trying to have an attitude with you, but it's the way you approach me. But you don't know she deal with that until after the fact. And you're like, damn. Now you're trying to correct it and you're battling 
for months, maybe even years, because while you was proving or when you were supposed to be proving and saying, look, I don't like that about you. Stop doing that. During the proving process, as she running them out all the time while you're on the phone, just running them out, running them out, running them out, you say, sis, 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 sis. Don't sign Christ bless you. You, you, you. you okay? Can I get a word in? Oh, I'm sorry. Now, she, even though she may be cut, even though she may be emotional, she know he don't like that. My future, possible future, future Lord don't like that. So she pick up on those things. And she started to adjust her conversation. See, all this time, during the proving process, you was molding her into what you want her to be. Now, and she's looking at you to see if you're the man for her. That's what the proving process is for. But when you bypass that, you have to go through these struggles. It still can work, but now you got to have a real conversation. You got to go into the scriptures and, and see what it is her thoughts or intents are and say, okay, sis, you got to correct this. You got to correct that. And then when she come to you with, your, with her grievances, you can't just shut her down and say, I'm not going to listen. That ain't a good husband. A good Lord going to say, okay, you're right. We didn't do the whole proven process. All right. So what is it that you see? Well, sometimes when I try to communicate with you, you shut down. Or when I try to tell you what's going on, you understand, you don't want to communicate and really talk about it. You always want to just, you know, put it off like I'm just trying to tell you what I see at the house. I'm at the house every day. Oh, this is what I see. I'm just letting you know. Don't, you know, don't shut me down. Yet you have to have these conversations with each other. He a man of God. He'll hear you out. If it's BS, he'll be like, nah, that's BS. But if it's if it's real and it's coming from the scriptures, it's like, okay, I'll pray to the Lord. Okay, I, I, okay, I can adjust that. You understand? These are adjustments that we all have to make. If you don't make the adjustment, you can't be mad if the marriage is still going through a lot of trials. It's because you're not making these adjustments, brothers or sisters, whoever it may be, because sometimes it's both of y'all. A lot of times it's both of y'all. Sometimes it's one of y'all. But then women ain't always in the spirit like they act like they is. And, and we not always in the spirit. Like we act like we are. And just because we got rank don't mean nothing either. We still men, and we still got to go through God's ringer. We got to go through the fire. So these things are revealed by a man. I mean, by, by, by the scriptures but about that person, even though y'all married already. You see what I'm saying? Because y'all didn't go through the proven process. So you literally, you literally still proving each other, still learning each other, even though you're married with children. You understand? That's why I asked, what is your relationship built on? Is it lust of marriage? Okay? Go to Sirach 25 and 1. Sirach chapter 25, verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Mm -hmm. The unity of brethren. Brothers and sisters, this is beautiful before God and men. The unity of brethren. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors and what? A man and a wife that agree together. That's beautiful. What a man and a wife agree together. So even though y'all didn't prove each other, y'all was young in the faith, you didn't know no better, you just say, look, we're going to get married, we, we want to keep the commandments. But you have to admit, yeah, it was kind of lustful. We, we, we could have proved, we could have did it, but I was scared of losing you and you were scared of losing me, and we wanted to keep getting it in, so we went ahead and got married. Okay. But are y'all going to agree together going to the scriptures now? Are y'all going to apply the scriptures towards your marriage now? Because that's in the past. That's over now. Y'all married. And marriage is honorable. Are you going to work on yourselves? Or are you going to continue to just go at each other's neck all the time, be struggling, you going through stuff, she going through stuff, and it's like y'all two individuals in a house? Can't be that way. It cannot be that way. Amos 3 and 3. The book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. So the Bible said, can two walk together except they agree? Go ahead. So, you know, read again. Can two walk together except they be agreed? The only way y'all can walk together is if y'all agree. Give me that real quick in the Sirach where it says, a woman having a mind after my mind. Sirach 7, 26 or 23 or 24? Sirach chapter 26. 7, verse 26. That's it. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Go ahead. Forsake her not. So it says, is her mind like yours? Don't forsake that woman. How do you know if her mind is like yours? How do you know? You have to try her mind. You got to see if she think like you think. You got to ask the right questions. And meanwhile, y'all married now. <laughs> y'all married now. But it can work if you apply the scriptures. It won't work when y'all stop working. You stop working, your marriage won't work. It only works when you work. All right? So are you willing to make it a godly marriage according to what God says? Go to uh, Sirach 40 and 23. Sirach chapter 40, verse 23. Go ahead. A friend and companion never meet a miss. So a friend and companion never meet a miss. Go ahead. But above both. But above both. Go ahead. Is a wife with her husband. Is a wife with her husband. So you and your friends, y'all don't fall out like that. 
a real friend. But above both is a husband and a wife. That's above friend. So that's the highest level of friendship, you and your wife. You ain't never thought about it like that, did you? All your boys you got in the world, all your homies, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you see them even, even though y'all on different life paths, you still see them and y'all court. You still see them and say, man, bro, what's up with you, man? You know what I'm saying? You know how that feeling. Or even a sister say, sis, how you doing? Even though y'all don't walk, y'all don't, y'all not doing the same thing. Y'all not on the same trajectory in life no more. It's still, y'all was friends at one time. Do you understand what I mean? And even your brother's your closest friend in this truth, right? You and your wife relationship is above all that. You understand what I mean? You and your wife relationship is above all that. These are the type of friends. You're supposed to have a real friendship with your real, bro. You're supposed to have a real friendship with your, with your husband, sisters. And the only way you're going to have a friendship or a true friendship and you're going to get past all these obstacles is to apply what the Bible says. If you're not doing that, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. Sirach 617. The book of Sirach. Because to find a friend, prove him first. That's out the window. Because y'all went ahead and got married. So it's like, okay, well, are we doomed? Are we destined to not work? No. That's not what God's saying. But you got to work, though. You got to work. Watch this. Sirach chapter 6, verse 17. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Mm. For as he is, so has, shall his neighbor be also. You hear that? So if you fear the Lord, you're going to direct your friendship aright. You're going to say, sis, you're going to sit your wife down. You're going to say, listen, however many years ago or whatever happened, look, we know better now. We didn't do it the right that the Bible says we should do it. But we here now. And now that we here, we're going to apply these scriptures. We're going to seek counsel because some of y'all, because of pride, you don't want to. I mean, I went over the levels of pride. Some of y'all, because of pride, you don't like to seek counsel. And if you didn't go through the proven process and now you just winging it and you're not seeking no counsel, you're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. You got to seek counsel. You got to ask questions. You got to talk to your leadership. You got to talk to you, you, somebody that you can find and that you know you can really talk to. And don't talk to nobody that's been married for one year or that was married. The, 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 you got married in March and they got married in February. No. Nope. You got to talk to people that's been married. That's been going through the fire. That's been through ups and downs. That I had a, a financial plateau and had been at the very brink of broke, being broke, uh, uh, damn bankruptcy. You understand what I'm saying? You got to talk to people that done been through some things together so that you can glean from that. It encourage you when you know it's somebody talking. talk. Because when I talk to people, I give them real life examples. I'm an open book. You know, I tell you, when I teach class, I be real open. I tell you about the stuff I go through. All the stuff I've been through, some of the stuff me and my wife been through. We ain't going to tell you everything, but I'll tell you some stuff we done been through. Especially if we done grown past it by now. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm going to tell you. Hey, look, me and my wife went through this. And we made it out because of this. You understand? And, and, you, and I ain't the only brother like that. There's many leaders in this truth that when you talk to them, they'll open up to you. I mean, one time, a brother's wife had a miscarriage. Or uh, was it miscarriage? Stillborn. And I had never been through that. So I called... Uh, a, bro, a leadership, one of the leaders in, in Israel United in Christ. And um, I told him what happened. And as we was talking, you know what he said? He said, uh, I might have told this story before. He said, um, he said, yeah, man, me and my wife went through that. I was like, damn, for real? Because I didn't know that. And he was breaking it down, telling me a whole story, how he had to really be there for his wife. She was going through it in her mind. She was struggling. There's some brothers and sisters in this truth. I just talked to a brother the other day. His wife just had a stillborn baby this past week. He called me because he watched the class I did on um, the miscarrying womb. And the 15 minutes of captains I did about the miscarrying womb. He watched it and he called me. I probably talked to this brother five times since I've been in this truth. He called me. He said, man, man, my wife just had the same thing happen to us. You know, when I saw your class, just wanted some encouragement, some counsel. And we talked, we had a good talk. By the time we got off the phone, we were talking about music, all kind of stuff. He was kind of, you know, opening up a little bit. So what I'm saying is you need to talk to people. You need to find your counselor or find somebody that or leadership or somebody that you and your wife can go to and y'all can sit down and talk about, okay, this is what we're struggling with. We need help. I guarantee you, you're going to feel better when you come up out of that, that counsel. And if you apply those things, it's going to work because the spirit of the Lord is in that council. But when you don't give the spirit of the Lord a chance, because, you know, you, you're watching class, but you're watching class. You're in a distance. 
we're not dealing with your situation per se. We're just throwing stuff out there. And if it, if it kind of deal with what you're dealing with, then you're like, damn, that cut me. But have you really gone and talked to somebody and said, you know what, this is what we're going through, and I really want to know what can we do to make it better because we're struggling right now. When you bypass that, you're not directing your friendship aright. You're not looking for God to be in that relationship. You go into the scriptures, you're pulling the same scriptures, but y'all still struggling with the same thing. You never went to nobody and say, okay, what can we apply to help make this work? That's on you. That's on you. Um, three more scriptures. Willing to work towards what God says marriage is. This is what we have to do. We always have to remember this. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For the man is not of the woman. So the man is not of the woman. So, so always remember that. The but, man is not of the woman. We don't come from you. Go ahead. But the woman of the man. You come from us. You came, the first woman came from her husband. That's why your name is woman. One man. Because you came from man. Go ahead and always remember that. Respect your Lord. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. Because your husband wasn't created for you. Go ahead. But the woman for the man. You was created for us to be our help me to be our pillar of rest to help us through this life. Go ahead. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Right, because of the leadership. Go ahead. But nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. And we're not without the woman. We need our wives. You understand? When you're in the right spirit, we need you. You understand? Because you help us. You help us go through this struggle that we're going through in this life. Go ahead. Neither the man without the, neither the woman without the man uh -huh. in the Lord. If see that? Read, oh, I like that part. Read that again. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Uh -huh. Neither the woman without the man in the Lord. You need a man that's a godly man. Hey, you know, it's another one in 1 Corinthians 7 where it says that she can remarry, but he got to be in the, he got to be in the truth. First 39, 1 Corinthians 7, 39. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. The, w the wife is bound by the law. As long as her husband liveth. Read. But if her husband be dead. If he die. She is at liberty to be married to whom she will. Only in the Lord. But he got to be a godly man. That's what the Bible saying. He got to be in this truth. You understand? So the woman is not without the man in the Lord. She need us in the Lord. She need a godly man to lead her. You have to do it according to God's word. It can't be outside of that. If it's outside of that, it's going to crumble. Why will it crumble? Go to Ephesians chapter 5, and this be, I'll close out right here. Ephesians chapter 5, and let's read verse, uh, start at 31. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. 28. Verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. You hear that? You must love your wife as your own body, all right? And you wouldn't, you wouldn't stab yourself, okay? You wouldn't beat yourself up or, or strangle yourself. You wouldn't do that, right? Unless you're crazy. Go ahead. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. Because a man don't hate his own flesh. You love your flesh. You put lotion on, deodorant. You understand? Go ahead. But nourisheth. You and nourish your flesh. Go ahead. And cherish it. You cherish your flesh. Even as the Lord the church. Uh-huh. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Watch this. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. Read. And they too shall be one flesh. You hear that? For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Why? Because you love that woman like you love your own flesh. You cherish that woman like you cherish your own flesh. You don't hate that woman because you don't hate your flesh. That's what the Bible talking about. Watch this. This is a great mystery. And this is a great mystery that he's speaking. Go ahead. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. So he's saying our marriage is symbolic of Jesus Christ and the church. Just meditate on that for a minute. Just go back and read the Gospels and see what Christ did for the nation of Israel. And then ask yourself, am I doing that for my real? Or how the nation of Israel is supposed to respect and deal with Christ and submit to Christ. Ask yourself, sisters, do I respect and deal with my Lord like that? Ask yourself that. Go ahead. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, uh -huh. and the wife, see that she reverence her husband. See that? Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. That's that deep respect that you have for that man. Even when he's struggling, even when he's going through it, you still have that respect for him. He loses his job, you still got the respect for him. You encourage him to get up and go get him another one. Even when he down and finances ain't good, but y'all still eating. You be that positive. Like, you say, you know what, my Lord? Okay, we ain't got X amount of dollars in the savings, but guess what? 
We eating. The bills is paid. It's warm in the winter. And it's cool in the summer. We going to be all right. The Lord going to bless us. Sometimes a man need to hear that. You understand? Sometimes a man needs to hear that. So I hope y'all was able to get something from today's, for today's class because it is something that we all need to be examining. Is our marriage built just on lust or is it love? Remember, you can get lust from the love. If you love that person, that, that's going to be the only person you want. You understand? If y'all really love each other, you'll get the lust. You'll have those times. Y'all have a great time. But if it's about lust, you won't get the love. You won't get it because it's only about uh, like, like, like I said in the, in, the, in, the, in the video that we showed at the very beginning of the class, lust don't care about nothing. Lust just trying to get his rocks off. And when I'm done, that's why I have you naive, crazy black women let this dude sleep with you and then he get up and leave while you sleep in the middle of the night. You understand what I'm saying? Like he just leave. Or he leave money on a nightstand. Treat you like a hoe. But guess what? That's how you live in. Repent. But I hope your brother and sister was able to get something from the class. I hope y'all in the spirit. Examine this. Stay in the spirit. Let's improve ourselves. All right? So, Shalom, family, most high, Christ bless. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.